kids, I'm Marie Miliora. Welcome, welcome to my channel. Tonight we are doing something that I've been kind of postponing for a long time. We're continuing a massive declutter of my perfume collection. If you love declutters, if you do like to look at a lot of bottles close up, uh, I have, I think at this point, three declutters already happened. Um, many of those perfumes are still available for swaps, but we can sort of talk a little bit more about the details uh, at the end of this video. Without further ado, this declutter is gonna be a little bit different. I'm slowly but surely inching toward my niche perfume collection, and I think with some of the houses, I'm not gonna be as brutal with declutters because I spent a lot of time and put a lot of care into figuring out what I like and what I don't like. So it's easier for me just to show you, you know, like some of collections and just point out a few items that are like, that I'm willing and like more than happy to find a second home for. And the first ones that will be on that list is L'Artisan Parfumeur. I already did a collection video for L'Artisan Parfumeur, so it's easy for me to now just kind of reference, cross-reference that if you wanna see, I have 19 or 18 fragrances by them. It's like, as a whole, a full-blown collection. It took me a long while to accumulate that many fragrances. So if you wanna know all the nitty-gritty details, which of the L'Artisans I consider to be worthy of, um, landing on my shelf you can watch it there here i'm just gonna show you two that i think i am willing to part with the first one is al oud i have a 90 90 mil and 100 mil bottle this is basically a dry bookish kind of like old books type of smell somewhat patchouli-ish green type of dry oud fragrance and I'm kind of picky with my ouds. I'm not sure if this is the one that I would love to wear. However, I wore more than 10 mil of this beautiful uh, scent. And I think I just, it's kind of like I'm keeping it for the collection's sake rather than for wearing it again. I gave it a really good run. You can't blame me for not trying. 10 mil is, is quite something, especially if you have over 200 ball collection but I just never quite fell in love with it. So this is, if anybody wants to swap a bottle or try Al Oud Bell Artisan, here's your chance. Uh, and the second one that I'm, I want to part with is Saffron Troublon. It is a very soft, spicy fragrance. This is the collection that was devoted to kitchen spices and this is basically a soft, warm kind of sweet spices with saffron as, as at the heart, saffron flower at the heart. It's very wearable, very nude, very quiet and skin-like and presence, at least to my nose. And I have so many nudes and so many soft spices that I think I can live with this without this one. Now for my collection of Histoire de Parfums. This is probably my second largest collection by the Perfume House. And I've been putting it off for a long time because I haven't yet made my collection video. I'm still, I still don't feel quite ready to have a f meaningful reviews for you guys about these. And yet I'm already doing a declutter, but we are where we are. So let's go through them quickly. I already know what I want to get rid of. And um, it's just, you know, it's the way it is. Anyway, my first ever purchase from them was a full-size bottle of 1828. It was just a lucky coincidence. It was on sale on some like huge discount store and I grabbed it without really understanding what I was buying into and I like it. And from this kind of started, this the whole thing kind of started my mini obsession with getting all of these book-like little, um, little creations. So the second one that I have is 1826, a more floral kind of version of the same. I guess the, the, some of the fragrances are more similar than others. So I kind of feel maybe I don't need both, but right now I, I'm, I'm not willing to part with any of these. Uh, 1725, if I remember that's Casanova, very soft, 
spices. I think I'm anosmic to some components in this fragrance because I barely feel it. I usually bathe in it, to be honest, but I like it, still like it. I'm gonna keep that. Um, Matahari, 1876. Bitter powder, beautiful, venomous kind of fragrance. I have a backup of it, actually. Definitely keeping that. Music Hall, a fairly rare perfume which kind of smells like old chairs in some major opera house but again i haven't given it enough of a chance so i'm gonna keep it even though it's definitely not for everyone but i'm gonna keep it for now the 1904 this is like the opera line that they had i love it this is like the ideal powdery iris in my collection this is like the perfecto of powdery iris the 1831 this is kind of a slightly powder aldehydic kind of fragrance and i'm not a big fan of aldehydes so this i actually thought i got rid of it but then i found it again so this definitely something that is ready to be swapped and this is fairly rare it's kind of hard to find these days the upper line now I have three from their blue bottle collection. I got them blindly, just hoping that, you know, that given that I love uh, the their years or portraits, I think it's called, portraits collection, that I'll probably like everything they make. But to be honest, this is 105. This is like perfume without a perfume. It's kind of like not a perfume type of thing. I can barely, barely, barely smell anything. This is very molecular in nature. So I can wear it as a nude, right? Like you just spray it on and hope that together with your skin chemistry, it overall, overall creates a pleasant ambience. But I have so many other perfumes that have a bouquet that I rather would prefer than to, you know, perfume without a perfume. So this definitely a candidate to go. The other one is uh, not a blue bottle, 1.3. This is very musky. Musky in the way that Juliet has a gun fragrances are. I guess Tiziana Terenzi also in a way, but Tiziana Terenzi musks are a little bit more fruity, a little bit more like pineapple-y in a way. And this, this really reminds me of Juliet Has a Gun. If you like their fragrances, you probably would like 1.3, but for me, I don't like those grabby, uh, very powerful white musks. That's not quite my cup of tea. So I, this is like a for sure, um, a, something that I will try to find a second home for. This one I'm less sure of, but like if somebody wants it, I'm happy to swap it. This is, not a blue bottle 1.4 the 1.4 is a little bit more focused and a little bit brighter um, younger sister if you wish of Masque Revageur by Frederic Mal. I used to have a travel of Masque Revageur I really enjoyed it but ever since I got this I don't feel like I need both at the same time uh, these kind of sweet boiled musks because I cat hair um, are not what I really gravitate towards, if I'm really into, if I really want to experience sweet masks, if it's fruity masks, I will either go for Killian or even more likely Mikalev. But if we're talking about truly gourmand sweet masks, it's Narcissa Rodriguez all the way. So I think uh, 1.4 could be a really great swap option for those of you who like uh, Mask Revisor by Frederick Mal. Okay, so history of the parfums, almost done. I actually have, ooh, I have actually more. I haven't showed you all of them. I also have, uh, wait, wow, oh, oh, more and more. Okay, but all of these I'm keeping. This is Veni from their uh, Precious Metals collection. This is Marquise de Sade, 1740, my um, confident full favorite. 1899, probably one of the bestsellers in the years portraits line which is Hemingway great soft spices and I have two travels from their black line Pro, uh, irreverent and prolix both of those I do like and therefore I'm getting rid of four and keeping 
two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Eleven historia perfumes I'm keeping by getting rid of four. If you guys are curious about hearing my brand and fragrances review for historia perfumes, please leave a comment below. Okay, now to the Etat Libre d'Orange. Let's see what we got here. As far as I can see, I have seven. Seven by Etat Libre d'Orange. Let's jump from those that I'm confident I'm going to keep. Like this, oh, beautiful, warm, spicy, gingery, kind of a pumpkin pie, love it. Um, fat electrician, creamy vetiver, like it. Still kind of trying to find my way around whether I like it, sort of like it or really like it. Haven't, I'm, I'm not quite sure yet, so I'll keep wearing it. Oh, this is like a must have in my collection by Tatli Bardaran. Feels did you, which is devoted to the culture and cuisine of Philippines, warm, Coconut, this like coconutty, sticky rice, beautiful, very comfortable, easy to wear, semi sweet, uh, nudie type of perfume with a lot of very soft, uh, finely milled spices. This is, I'm still not quite sure if I like it, but I keep putting it, putting off wearing it substantially. This is another Marquise de Sade, um, but this time by Tadley Bird Orange. This is a very musky, leathery, very mm, piercing type of perfume. I really need to give it a good test run before I make my final call on it. So I'm keeping it for now, but I'm definitely willing. Like all the big bottles that you can see, if you want to decant, I do decant swapping as well, or you can buy them on my website as well. All links will be below if you're curious. Okay, now we have Sharon that I kind of sort of wore but not that much, so I need to wear it more. But I think I do like it enough to keep it either way. I have Dangerous Complicity. I think this was my first Etat Libre d'Orange, actually. And this is like the least um, poignant of them all. It's very soft, kind of like some... Um, kind of watered down, somewhat fruity rum fragrance. It's very pleasant, but it's also doesn't have much of silage, doesn't have much of anything. And that's me talking. I'm the person who loves watercolory fragrances and I don't really enjoy beast-like mode fragrances at all. Still, this is a bit too, too ethereal even for my taste. Even though when I do wear it and do enjoy it, it's just, you know, I have so many fragrances of that nature. Like just to mention a few, um, one of the longtime favorites is my second bottle. This is Si Lolita by Lolita Limpica. Beautiful pink peppery, softly milled spices. The same store, almost the same story here. This is Dolce and Gabbana L'Intemperance. Goodness, I have like so many of, actually Safran Troublant, the one that I'm willing to part with, where it is, here it is, is also very much similar story. I don't really need that many of the same thing. So if, if there are any takers, Dangerous Complicity, if you like coconut rum, if you like white rum, if you like Bacardi idea of a, of a fragrance, which is very sensual and very skin-like, this could be it for you. So I think this could go. And uh, La Fine du Monde, which is a metallic popcorn, I try to like it. It's kind of fun idea, but I think I know a person who will like it even more. So for now, it's reserved for a friend of mine. If she doesn't want it, uh, then, um, then it will be up for grabs. This is all what concerns the Tadley Bird Orange. Now, from Parfums d'Orsay, I have two. Definitely keep both, but you can buy decants or swap decants if you're interested. This is L'Intrigante, very much uh, Poutin de Palaces, like from Tadley Bird Orange, maybe Moulin Rouge, maybe in a way, all these like dusty, somewhat vintage smells. L'Entregante has it all, but I do prefer this version to all the aforementioned ones. Keep that, La Dandy, beautiful candy, like this hot candy 
to it a little bit with the florals. It's just such a sunny, yet not cheap and not too girlish of a fragrance. I love La Dendi. Okay. Serge Luton's. Serge Luton's collection right now, if I'm not mistaken, if I didn't forget anything, consists of six fragrances in my collection. I used to have probably over 15 at some point and I already did a severe declutter there. So I had almost all of the kind of best-selling classics in this format. You name it, Jo de Po, Chargui, Baptême de Faux, oh, Le, Re, Le Religieux, so, what else? Umber Sultan, Arabi. I had a lot of them and I got rid of all of them. The ones that I actually kept are Vitriol du Lait, my favorite carnation scent, Grey Claire, beautiful, beautiful lavender, uh, Femini du Bois, mm, it's kind of like plum wine in a way, Santal Majuscule, I do like it more than on Bois Vanille and it's, it's kind of like my favorite favorite gourmand by Serge Lutens. Uh, vetiver Oriental, mm, it's very solid vetiver. Dame Blonde, beautiful suede. And somewhere here, I think I hid it somewhere, I have two travels of uh, Ferrand Noir. So one, I'm actually more than willing to part with. Now it's kind of really hard to find. They discontinued it in the in this format and now you can only buy it in the little bell the bell shaped like a bottle and they cost a fortune so if anybody is interested i'm willing to swap 30 mil because i already have another 30 mil that will last me a long time however there are two serge Dutton's fragrances that i got to try before i actually commit to a full-size bottle i'm so glad i did because i'm now looking for the second home for the decants themselves this is serge Dutton's ou participe passé I'll, like, I think I'll have a list of everything that's up for grabs in the description down below. You can double check it there. Basically to me, this is a marriage between all ambery sweet scents that Serge Dutton's had before, including it's some kind of odd mix of Jean de Pau and En Bois Vanille and Amber Sultan all mixed together. To me, unfortunately, the amber scents by Serge Dutton's do smell to me like burned caramel not exactly what i'm looking for in the fragrance so um this is a cool scent uh i i'm glad i tried it but i'm not i'm just i just know i'm not gonna wear it i have so many beautiful ambers that kind of fit better into what i'm looking for so this this serge is up for grabs and the second one that i got just very recently and i already kind of like nope I don't even need to give it any more tries. This is, uh, both of them are eight mil, by the way. This is uh, Dendole, uh, which is supposed to be this kind of like minty, slightly clean, and yet it's, it's, it's an odd concept. If you wanna read up about this fragrance, you definitely should. I'm not giving it justice, doing it justice by trying to describe what it's supposed to be. To me, this is some kind of, odd combination of freshly bleached surface with bubble gum. This is the kind of situation when the true niche, um, <laughs> I meet the limit of my <laughs> vocabulary when it comes to true niche perfumes. Uh, Dentale is, is, is something that I think, I, I find that Serge Dutton's perfumes are a lot like a wizard's wands from the Harry Potter world where the wand chooses the wizards and not the other way around. The Serge Dutton's fragrances choose their owners and not the other way around. They either open you up and like fit you, like invite you into their world or they don't. And with these two, like the invitation never happened. They just backfire at me, to be honest, with like either burnt caramel or like bubblegum bleach it's just i can't make sense of it and i think they deserve to have better 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 noses uh that will sniff them uh Rodriguez this is going to be 
hard. Uh, with Narcissa Rodriguez, I don't know how about you, for me it's kind of all or nothing. Once you get into the warm of, into the world of Narcissa Rodriguez masks, it's very hard to, to, <laughs> to not buy everything that they make. Uh, I have the traditional one, Eau de Parfum is just like a limited edition um, collector's bottle. Um, love this, that's definitely keep. I have another flanker which is for her in color, which to me is a little bit more powder, a little bit more suede-like. I think this is also a keep though, a bit redundant I would say compared to the original Eau de Parfum, but I, I can't, it's such a beautiful bottle, I'm gonna keep that one. And I had three cubes. Uh, all the original ones, like the newer ones, I'm not, to be honest, not that interested in. I have the Y Cube Narciso Black, which is Eau de Toilette, and the Narciso Rouge. I love the packaging of Narciso Rouge, absolutely in love with it, and it's the most makeup y of all of these. It has a very well rounded, it's kind of like the smell of, of a well loved makeup bag, at least to my nose. Beautiful bottle beautiful smell, but I almost never wear it. If I go for Narcissa Rodriguez, it's usually Eau de Parfum or a more kind of suede version, which is in color. So I kept it primarily for like the shape factor. I, I love the packaging, but if the right swap opportunity comes along, this can go. Same actually goes for the black one. Uh, it's a little bit more sharp and pointy but it's in a way very cheerful and kind of a little bit more out there like i find that eau de toilette has a little bit more of a presence compared to all the parfums that they have in general so this it's the thing like with either of this if nobody wants them i'm fine i'm fine to keep them but at the same time if i'm really honest with myself all the cubes can go this is like a very hard thing for me to say but it's true and even though like with the red and the black I'm kind of fine with letting them go again given the right swap opportunity or like uh, right price with the white one it's truly painful because I chased the white cube for probably two years I could not find it for a reasonable price because it never would go on sale. It's also a testament on how popular it is, probably the most popular of all of the Narciso cubes. And once I finally got it, I probably only wore it three times. This is a more gardenia combined with their signature musks, but I just I don't care for it as much. Like I enjoy it when I wear it, but the love affair that I dreamt up in my mind never happened. So all three cubes actually could go and I would be, to be completely honest, to be perfectly content with just one, but for now, for now, this is staying. The two are staying for sure. Okay, I only have one fragrance by Raja Dove. 